Greetings, in the precious name of Jesus to each one here this morning. Welcome to each one. Good to see each one that's here. Even though we have some missing again today, we can still worship together. It's blessed in the services here this morning, the devotional, always having that mindset that Jesus is coming again and that we keep our lives always in readiness. And then the Sunday school, interesting. The last question that we were looking at said, what are some practical ways we can imitate the Father? Practical ways we can imitate the Father. Well, the message this morning is a very practical way that we can imitate the Father. It is a very practical message, but it is based on the Word of God, I believe. Definitely open myself for correction. But one of the closing thoughts in Sunday school that Brother Freeman mentioned was that uh, Jesus went about doing good. Really. We are to imitate the Father and Jesus in our lives. So that simply means that if we imitate the Father, if we imitate Jesus, that we are also to be going about doing good, does it not? <clears throat> we talked about livelihoods in Sunday school, about how, how do we imitate the Father when we're about our business. Well, I believe it can. I believe that in everything that we think, do, or say should be for the benefit of mankind. Our businesses should be conducive to society, if you will. Whether we're building windows, whether we're installing windows, or raising flowers, or building pole barns, or putting in garage doors. It is for the benefit of others, is it not? How many of us would like to have a house without windows? Wouldn't be very nice. And then the, for the sister's side as well, there's, there's things that are even more pertinent to doing good to others in what you do and keeping the home or maybe you have a job at a store or uh, whatever it is you, you are doing good to others so this morning I'd like to hone in on one particular subject of doing good that the Bible is very clear on has much teaching on and I titled the message the Christian and hospitality Really? The Bible talks about being hospitable? Yes, it does. In Romans chapter 12, verse 10, is the text verse for the message this morning, 10 through 13. Romans 12, 10 through 13. <clears throat> Here it says, Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love, in honor, preferring one another, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality. It's bringing out the fruits, if you will, of the Christian life. And hospitality is a fruit of a Christian. We talked about how we know this morning about, uh, I forget exactly what the question was in Sunday school, but we, I, I made the mention that by their fruits ye shall know them. And the implication was made that some people can make good fruits without having goodness in themselves. But I would like to say that when the tree roots is not drawing, is not healthy, is not tapped into the right source, the tree will rot. You can't. It may have, it may take a few days till those leaves wither, but they will wither. And so it is for us, in order for us to live a Christian life that produces fruits of goodness, 
that is a blessing to others, we must be tapped into that good source. That is Jesus Christ and his word, as we had this morning already. Without being tapped into the, the true source, hospitality and preferring one another is not going to be there. Or if it is, it's going to be fictitious enough that it won't really meet the needs, if you will. It, it, won't, it won't be genuine. And my dear friends, I'd like to say this morning that if it's not genuine, it won't meet the caliper that God is asking of his children. Because if we have to do something, we usually don't do a very good job at it. <clears throat> Hospitality in the dictionary says, given to a generous and warm reception of guests, offering a readily receptive, pleasant, and sustaining environment, anticipating the needs of others. That's hospitality. Notice it said generous and warm reception. You might say ample proportions. <coughs> it simply means that when we are hospitable to others, when we have the privilege of ministering to others' needs, that it's not just enough to get them by until they get to somewhere else where they can make it. But it means to give them more than needed. I believe a Christian, his desire and his goal should be that other people are blessed beyond what they need. And without having a thankful attitude like we had in Sunday school as well, it will be hard for us to, to give, to meet the needs of others if I'm unthankful for where I am. If I'm unthankful for what God has blessed me with. But when I am thankful, when I bless God for the goodness that he's given me, even though it probably varies greatly between how much we have and possess, but it is being thankful with what we have. And then we can be hospitable to others. We can do it because of the abundance that God has blessed us with, regardless of what major that is. Notice the root word of hospitality is hospital. Ever think of that? What do we do when we go to the hospital? We want, we go there because we have needs and we expect them to be met. And when you're laying in the hospital bed, you're the recipient. They take care of you hand and foot, we say. They come in and they ask you if there's anything they can get for you. If, if you need your blanket, more blankets, or can I, can I get you a warm blanket? And they actually take it and warm it up and bring it and put a warm blanket on you. And they, they ask you if there's anything you want to eat or drink or, and, and how are you feeling? You need some pain pills. And, and, and they, they just look after you and they, they seek to do all they can to make you comfortable. And that's how hospitality is. Is there anything we can do to make your stay more enjoyable, to make you feel better, to meet your needs? That should be our goal in life, meeting others' needs. And you know, when I am selfish, when I am covetous, when I am not content with the blessings God has given me, it takes away my desire to bless others because I'm focused on myself. I'm focused on what I'm lacking. But when I am thankful, when I am blessed, above, beyond measure, it puts within me the, the desire to bless others rather than looking at myself. Oh, I've got such a hard road. Oh, life is so difficult. Oh, I'm just, I'm just in despair. And why can't I have what Freeman has? And why can't, why can't I have this or that? Or, you know, life just isn't fair. And we wad up within ourselves and we don't care about others. God help us that we can get our focus or keep our focus off of ourselves and focused on others. And then as we see the needs in others that God has blessed us with, then we can see to meet those needs. But if I'm focused on myself, I don't see those needs. <clears throat> Given to Notice that, given to hospitality. That's scriptural, my dear friends. Given to means it is an inner desire that becomes habit. 
We do it by instinct. It's no longer, oh, I guess I should. I should probably make a meal and take it over to them, even though I just don't know how I'm going to work it in. Or I guess I should go to the work bee, but how in the world am I ever going to get my stuff done? Given to an inner desire. I, I want to go. I know I've got this and that that I have to do, but you know what? I want to go so bad that those things are just going to take second place. I'm going to go. That's the difference. The difference is because I'm given to it. I desire it. And my dear friends, when I desire to do something, I usually find a way to attain it. Makes all the difference if I want to or not. <clears throat> and then it, it brought out the element that we do it by instinct. To where we have done it for so long that that inner desire has been within me so long to be hospitable, to share with others and to help others and to be there for others that it becomes instinct or if you will, it becomes a natural response. I don't have to tell me now, what would Jesus do? Oh, I'd say he'd probably ask me to go do this. No, we're beyond that. We look at others and we say, I want to do this. Can I help you with that? Or you get the point. When we do something long enough, it becomes a habit. I remember as a little boy, I had the habit of wearing my glasses like that. And I'd, you know, do my stuff and then I'd just look out over the top. One day, we were having fellowship meal at church. And we had a visiting evangelist at church. Us young boys were eating our lunch. We had our plates on our lap. I still plainly visualized me sitting there in that row of boys. And you know, my glasses were down like this. And the evangelist walks right past us, and he was greeting us boys. And all of a sudden, that pastor grabbed his glasses and went like this. What are you doing, young man? You know what? I learned to push my glasses up. What was the difference? My mom and dad told me many, many, many times, push your glasses up. Push your glasses up. But I didn't care. Until all of a sudden, I cared. And you know, when I cared, it changed. And now, I have a habit of making sure they're up there. It's habit. I've done it long enough. I don't have to say, ooh, my glasses are sliding down. Am I that way with hospitality? Have I done it long enough that it's just habit? It's just born within me that I want to bless others. Leviticus 19.33 says, And if a stranger sojourn with thee in the land, ye shall not vex him. But, as a, but the stranger that dwelleth with you shall be unto you as one born among you. And thou shalt love him as thyself. For ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. <coughs> wow. That says that the stranger should be as one born in our own house. It should be as our own children. And that we love a stranger as good as ourselves. Well, I tend to give myself a pretty good bed at night. I tend to make sure I have my meals when I want them. I have lots of things that I do because that's what I want to like it. That should be our goal for strangers. Strangers, that means people that we don't even know. <clears throat> this was Old Testament law, and it was not a suggestion. And thou shalt love him as thyself. You know what I love, my fellow man? It is not a sacrifice to meet his needs. When I do not love my fellow man, and I'm called to meet his needs, it's a sacrifice. Or you might say it hurts. But it never hurts to bless others when we have love for them. The problem is, I lack too much love at times. 
I don't love my fellow man as I should, and therefore, I don't care about their needs. Deuteronomy 10, 17, For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, a great God and a mighty and a terrible, which regardeth not persons nor taketh the reward. He doth execute the judgment of the fatherless and widow, and loveth the stranger in giving him food and raiment. Love ye therefore the stranger, for ye were late strangers in the land of Egypt. Again, very similar verse to Leviticus there. <clears throat> Looking out for others more than ourselves. There was a man that lived along a busy interstate, and he heard every time, you know, every vehicle was going by, he heard this chum chum, chum chum, chum chum. Well, there was a chuck hole in the road. And he got to thinking about the many, many, many vehicles that are being affected by this one pothole. And he goes out and he takes a shovel and a little bit of patch of some kind and he patches that pothole. Many, many people went across that pothole not even knowing the blessing that that man did for them. But they were reaping for his blessings without him even getting a reward. And I guess my point is, are we willing to be hospitable to others or to do good things for others even if it brings us no recognition? You know, sometimes we tend to become charitable if we think it'll be noticed. But are we charitable without being noticed? When the love of God is in my heart and my love for fellow man, I will do that without seeking recognition. <clears throat> like it says in Luke 14, when thou makest a feast, call the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind, and thou shalt be blessed. For they cannot recompense thee, for thou shalt be recompensed at the resurrection of the just. In other words, doing good to others without recognition, we will receive the reward in eternity. It's like laying up treasures in heaven when we bless others and are hospitable to others without seeking recognition. <clears throat> Romans 16 verse 1 says, I commend unto you Phoebe, our sister, which is a servant of the church, which is in Sencria, that ye receive her in the Lord as become a saint, and that ye assist her in whatsoever business she hath need of you. For she hath been a succorer of many, and of myself also. A succorer of many. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it. I was going to look that up, and I forgot. I pronounce it succorers or succour. I'm not sure. I should have looked that up. But... Uh, what that means is one who furnishes relief or aid to others. She was one that was concerned about relief and aid to others. And she was a lady in the church. So I'd like to say this morning that if you find yourself to be a lady in the church this morning, you can also be a succorer of many or a, a taking care of many needs for others. One who furnishes relief or aid. Like Proverbs 31 woman where it says, She stretcheth out her hand to the poor. She reacheth forth her hands to the needy. And what a blessing it is when sisters in the church see needs and they, and they go about doing them. And, and you know, it, it comes into, I just now, I, I think of the church basement again and, and everything that's gotten done down there. I mean, all the painting and the things. I mean, it looks so different down there. And... That's a form of hospitality. Those that care about needs that need to be done in the church. And we could, we could even bring in other responsibilities that we have. It's, it's looking out for the needs of others, not just our own selves. Even though, yes, we are recipients of painting the basement, if you will. But seeking the good of others. Hospital, hospitality is more than food and a bed. It could be changing a tire. Take someone to the doctor, help someone in the garden, visit shut-ins, send cards, or give a phone call or a text. You know, there's many ways that we can show hospitality without even hosting someone for the night. We often tend to think that hospitality means that when we bring someone over for the night, we give them a bed, and that is, that is hospitality. But it does not stop there. <clears throat> 
In Hebrews 13, verse 1, let brotherly love continue. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. And remember them that are in bonds, as bound with them, and them which suffer adversity, as being yourselves also in the body. Notice here, it's talking of empathizing with others. It means to, to really have a feeling for the needs of others. <clears throat> Be not forgetful to entertain strangers. Again, bringing in, we don't have to know them. Uh, in order to, to be a blessing and bring them into our homes. I think I've mentioned this before. But back when I was probably six or seven years old, we had a tremendous winter snowstorm. <coughs> and lo and behold... Someone comes knocking on our door who got stuck in the middle of the road, just right close to our house. And we invite the man in, it was just a single man. <clears throat> Brought him into our home and my parents made sure he had a nice warm place to be and the weather was, was not conducive to go out and try to pull him out. There was no way he was gonna proceed further. So my parents took him in. And he was with us several days in our house until they came through with payloaders to open up the, the road. But I, I just vividly remember the things, and, and I might mention, just as a side note, how many of you, you older get people like me, probably remember Evil Knievel? Does anyone know of Evil Knievel? He was a stunt motorcycle driver that jumped a lot of uh, vehicles, he, I think 150 feet long jump at one time. <clears throat> Had every bone broken in, his body, broken in his body, I believe it said. But back in my day, he was well known. He died in 2007. Anyway, this man that stopped for our house was his brother, Gifford. Gifford Knievel. And... Uh, so I was standing in awe at this, you know, this visitor that we had. But I still remember mom and dad giving him a bedroom. He had his own bed, but dad also had him in part of our morning devotional and prayer. Hospitality has a means of, of being able to reach not only physical needs, but spiritual needs of others. I remember how he awkwardly could not figure out, I mean, Dad explained to him about how we kneel for morning prayer. And this was just very awkward for him. But to me, it, it, I look back at that situation, I marvel at my mom and dad. You know, I probably have the tendency to just kind of give him his quarters and say, there you are, and give you your stuff. But no, they included him right into our family. <clears throat> so I believe that entertaining strangers, some have entertained angels unawares. Maybe he wasn't even Gifford Knievel's brother. I don't know. Maybe it was an angel. But anyway, we always treat strangers with respect and meeting their needs as well. <clears throat> it says, remember them that are in bonds as bound with them. Hospitality remembers those that are less fortunate. How many of you remember the Lisa Miller case where she, I think Ken, Ken Miller, Lisa Miller situation? You know she's in prison right now? She is in bonds because of her faith. Do you remember her? How about sending her some cards? You know, there's ways that we can be hospitable to others as they face adversity. <clears throat> As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto those of the household of faith. So strangers and those of especially to those within the church. First Peter 4, verse 7, but the end of all things is at hand. Be therefore sober and watch unto your prayer, and above all things have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. Notice how often that in consecutive verses, it speaks about love and charity along with hospitality. They all go hand in hand. You can't separate it. If I don't have a love and charity for my fellow man, I won't have hospitality. But if I love and I have charity for my fellow man, 
It will produce within me a desire to bless them with charitable contributions. We open our homes without grudging, without murmuring and complaining, if you will. Thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thus he calls a fire on his head. So it doesn't even mean just a stranger and those within the church, but even our enemies. We are to be good to them, to bless them and provide for their needs. A man took his dog to the veterinarian and asked him to cut off his tail completely. The veterinarian asked, why would you tell me to touch your dog's tail off? That's not humane. And the man said, I want you to cut his tail off because when my mother-in-law comes for the, to visit, I don't want him to wag his tail so she thinks she's welcome. Well, he, did, he was going to be hospitable to his mother-in-law because he had to, not because he wanted to. <clears throat> A Chicago businessman called his wife to get her okay to bring home a visiting foreigner as a guest for dinner that night. At the time, the wife had three children in school, one preschooler, so there were plenty of important things to do besides entertaining strangers. But she consented, and the meal came off without a hitch. The foreigner, an important Spanish official, never forgot that meal. Years later, some friends of the family went to Spain as missionaries. Their work was brought to a standstill by government regulations. When the Spanish official got word that the missionaries were friends of the hospitable Chicago couple, he used his influence to clear away the restrictions. There is a church today in that province of Spain due in part to that one meal. One meal. Never any idea of how far hospitality can go in being a witness for Jesus. Jesus went about doing good. The Bible tells me so. He healed the sick. He healed the blind. The little children, he was kind. He gave some hungry people food. Said to all, be kind and good. Jesus went about doing good. The Bible tells me so. And he asks us as his people to do the same. We never know how great things God can accomplish through selfless acts of his people. Then in... 1 Peter 4, verse 10, As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Again, coming back to the manifold grace of God. The unmerited favor that God has given to us. The many blessings that he has bestowed us with. That we are good stewards of these, and a good steward is not a hoarder. But a good steward is one who uses it wisely. There is a difference. Freely ye have received, freely give. You know, we give to others what we have been privileged to receive. May I say that what we give to others, well, maybe that's not quite true. We cannot give to someone else what we have not received. So if I have good things to give to others, I have been a recipient of that first. And it is an undeserved favor of God that we have to give. I was going to say that we give to others what we have inside. And that is true to a certain degree. But you can also do good without having good inside. <clears throat> In John 1, verse 5, it says, Beloved, thou doest faithfully whatsoever thou doest to the brethren and to strangers, which have borne witness of thy charity before the church, whom if thou bring forward on their journey after a godly sort, thou shalt do well, because that for his name's sake they went forth, taking nothing of the Gentiles. We therefore ought to receive such that we might be fellow helpers to the truth. That stood out to me as I thought of being a fellow helper to the truth through hospitality. <clears throat> How can we do that? How can I be a fellow helper to the truth? Help to missionaries. Help to others who are spreading the gospel through hospitality. You know, we think of the widow at... Hmm just comes to my mind, the widow 
that made a room for Elijah, I think it was, or Elisha, Elijah. I think it was Elijah. She made a room for him. And she was not a prophet, but she aided God's work in the prophet Elijah's life by being hospitable. And you know, we can do that as well. We can enhance the building of the kingdom of God by enhancing or being sharing and meeting needs of those that are maybe have a calling in that area. We can do that monetarily. You know, we can do that through offerings, mission aid offerings, or sending money to CAM, or MIM, or the Iraq ministry as we do. That's a form of hospitality, if you will. It's looking after the needs of others. And we can cause the kingdom of God to be built by hospitality. Putting gas in the preacher's gas tank. You know, I, I still remember going with my dad to, to church meetings. And after church, neighbor, one of the church people nearby said, would you please stop in? How much gas you got in your car? Would you please stop in? I'd like to fill it for you. You know, that, that just stood out to me as a child, that, that they would do that. And for them, it was just a way of a, a token for building the kingdom. And I believe that that should be our focus and our goal, that hospitality Sharing with others is a way of building the kingdom. It is never lost to do good to others. <clears throat> Isaiah 41, verse 6. They helped everyone his neighbor, and everyone said to his neighbor, Be of good courage. So the carpenter encouraged the goldsmith, and he that smoothed with the hammer smote the anvil, saying, It is ready for the soldering. And he that fastened it with the nails, that it should not be moved. And on and on it went. They encouraged each other. They blessed each other. And we can do that in word and in deed. <clears throat> Many examples in the Bible of those who had hospitality. Abraham, he was sitting at his tent's door and he sees the Lord. Three men stood by him. He ran to meet them at the tent door and he bowed himself toward the ground. And it goes on and says, My Lord, now that I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. But let, let a little water, I pray you, be fetched. And wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree, and I will fetch a morsel of bread. And comfort ye your hearts, after that ye shall pass on. Therefore are you come unto your servant. And he said, So do as I said. He said, You know, just, just stay here. I'll, I'll, I'll wash your feet. I'll, I'll, I'll meet your needs. And I'll, I'll get some food on the table. And we'll, we'll, we'll provide your every need. Abraham had a heart of hospitality. <clears throat> it says, Abraham hastened into the tent of Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of fine meal, knead it, and make cakes upon the earth. And Abraham ran to the herd and fetched a calf tender and good and gave it to the young man. And he hastened to dress it, and he took butter and milk and the calf which he had dressed and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree, and they did eat. Notice the, the, the fervor that he put into this. He ran. He ran into his wife Sarah, then he ran out to get the, and he was, I could just see him as, as he had his heart into meeting the needs of these strangers. He didn't recognize these people. <clears throat> Christian hospitality seeks to give the best we have for our guests. I don't believe he went out and found a cold calf to dress. I don't believe they took some flour that had some bugs in it. I believe they made sure that they were getting their best for these guests. And I believe that we as God's people should do the same when we have company. Giving them our best. Or when we meet needs of others. You know, I've heard the, the saying, have you slept on your guest bed? They say you should always sleep on your guest bed to see how, how you're treating your guests. Is your bedroom adaptable for those who like it warmer or cooler? Do the guests know where the towels and the washcloths are? What food and drink is a special liking for them? Do we seek out what they want? Makes me think of down in Good Spring when we was down there for Bible school. Stayed at Homer Freeman's. We had a really good time there. 
they weren't bashful at all. And I guess we weren't either. But many of you know that maybe you don't. I like a glass of milk before I go to bed at night. And I got some evening pills I take. And they just found a big bang out of this preacher that needed a <laughs> bottle to go to bed. But they, even this last time we were down there, they were again joking about the preacher and his milk. But it was a blessing because they just loved, they made sure that they bought enough milk for this preacher. Well, it makes good relationships. And we have fond memories of being together. And so it is that we seek out what we can bless our company with. Lydia to Paul and Silas in Acts 16, verse 13. And on the Sabbath, we went out of the city by a riverside where prayer was wont to be made. And we sat down and spake unto the women which resorted thither. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Thyatira, which worshiped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord had opened. And she attended to the things which were spoken of Paul. And when she was baptized and her household, she besought us, saying, If ye have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. I love that picture. She says, you know now that, that we've made acquaintance here, and now that I'm a part of the family of God too, won't you come to my house? And she just didn't say, you know, if you all want to before you leave, you know, you can stop in, I'll get you some tea or something, but if you're busy and you, you need to go, just go ahead. It says she constrained us. That means that she said, please, come to my house yet. I want to share with you. You've been such a blessing and encouragement to me. I want to bless you. And she constrained them to come. You know, it's pretty easy to go to someone's house when you know they really want you to come. But when you're not sure if they really want you there or not, when they, uh, did they just say that because they knew it was their duty and they really would rather not? You don't really feel at home, do you? She constrained us. Do we constrain people that we can bless them. Did she know before she left home she would have guests staying at her house that night? I doubt it. I really doubt it. Oh, but the children's toys are still in the living room. The basement hasn't been cleaned in three weeks. Oh, what am I going to have? Oh, I'm not prepared. We need to be more focused on hospitality than on the pride of a house in perfect neatness and cleanliness and having just the right meals. God loves hearts that are hospitable. <clears throat> Many other verses we could turn to. Rahab, I'd like to focus just a little bit on Rahab the harlot. She was saved because of what? Because she was hospitable to the spies. She took them in. She fed them, gave them water, and gave them protection. And it saved not only her, but her household. My dear friends, we are laying up treasures in heaven when we take people into our homes, when we meet other people's needs. We are laying up treasures in heaven. And when Jesus comes again, like the children of Israel came around the walls of Jericho and the walls fell down except for where Rahab's house was and she was delivered. My dear friends, when we share the blessings, the manifold blessings that God has showered upon us with our fellow man, just now it comes to my mind and we must realize that what we have is not ours. It makes all the difference in my willingness to share with others when I'm only a steward, and it's not mine. In verse 25 of Joshua 6, it says, And Joshua saved Rahab the heart of the life, and her father's household, and all that she had. And she dwelleth in Israel even unto this day, when this was written, because she hid the messengers which Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. 
It was a life and death matter. My dear friends, I would like to say that hospitality is not an option for the Christian. It is a command. Hospitality is not just for when it's easy. It's a command. Isaiah 58, verse 6. Is not this the fast that I have chosen, to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to set the oppressed free, and that ye break every yoke? Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out of thy house? When thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thy health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy re-reward. And thou shalt call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and shall say, Here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and speaking vanity. And if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry, and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity, and thy darkness be as the noonday. And the Lord shall guide thee continually, and satisfy thy soul in drought, and make fat thy bones, and thou shalt be like a water garden, like a spring of water whose waters fail not. Oh, the great blessing and the rewards of those who care about the needs of others. If we deal bountifully, God will deal bountifully with us. No, it's not that we go about doing good just so God will give us more. But it's because of the blessings that God has bestowed upon us that we share with others. And my dear friends, it just redounds again to more blessings and more goodness from God. Many other verses that, would, that would, we could bring in you know, bury you one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. <clears throat> then in Matthew 25, 34, it says, Then shall the king say unto those that are on the right hand, Notice, those that are going into the kingdom of heaven, Come, ye blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was in hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, Ye took me in, naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous say, Lord, when saw we thee with all these things? And he shall say, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. My dear friends, as we share with others, as we sacrifice our things for blessing others, we're doing it to the Lord. And the reward is heaven for eternity. It is not an option. It is a command. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Shall we kneel for a word of prayer? <clears throat> Dear Lord, as we bow in your presence here this morning's hour, Lord, we come to you with gratitude, with thankfulness. Lord, lifting our hearts to you for your blessings, your goodness, and your kindness to us. Lord, we recognize that we are a very blessed people, and especially, Lord, for the sacrifice of Jesus, your only dear son on the cross, freely giving us life that we can have life and that we can have it more abundantly. Forgive us, Lord, where we have failed you and we have been unthankful, when we have been selfish, when we have focused on our own selves rather than others. Oh, Lord, we recognize our tendency is for self. Oh, Lord, we pray that you would help us that we can ever Seek to grow more like you, doing good to others, blessing others, and sharing with others as we think of the great blessings you have bestowed upon us. We pray that you would grant us grace, courage, and strength to do what's right at all times, and that we can be a beacon and a light to the lost and dying about us. And not only that, but Lord, that we can be a true blessing in the church that we can use hospitality one to another without grudging, blessing each other, building each other up in the most holy faith. Thank you for your goodness and for brothers and sisters in Christ. May we always value each other as a blessing from you. Just bless us together. Keep us in the hollow of your hand. In Jesus we pray. Amen.
like to open it up for testimony or correction, whatever the Lord would lay on your heart. <laughs> 